preseason is wrapping up. Roster cuts are coming down. But before we get to that, where are the top five players that were taken in this draft? Who actually has progressed? It's just a short actual piece of time. We know we need three years, but we got to check in on them right now. The top five players in this draft, where they are today on Locked On NFL Draft. You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I am your host, former NFL and AFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy from Rogue Analytics and Locked On Chiefs. He is at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter. I am at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. We want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day and also let you know that today's episode of Locked On NFL Draft is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepick.com, promo code locked on. All right, y'all, let's get into it, man. We're talking about the draft and how these players are doing. And we got to start at the top, which, again, it, you know, it was a, a controversial pick, but I guess by the time the pick was made, some people were kind of expecting it right. a little bit. And it all was centered around Trent Baalke and what he likes. And he likes those long arm, athletic guys. Uh, we saw him do this with Alden Smith. He took him a little higher than Alden Smith was projected to go. People kind of thought it was crazy at the time. Alden Smith was a situational pass rusher as a rookie. Uh, for the 49ers, had a terrific rookie year, and it worked out, aside from the off-the-field stuff. But as far as the player, they identified that part was right. Uh, right. This year, Trevon Walker, number one overall pick to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he's making a transition as a guy who uh, wasn't just an every-down, 4-3, edge rusher type guy. Now he's going to be asked to do some of those things. So uh, what have you seen so far, and do you think that he's trending in the right direction, right? I do think the trend is up there, right? Like this was a guy that came into this preseason as as one of the bigger question marks because of everything you said. He's drafted for length, explosiveness, functional strength. He was not drafted for refined pass rush moves. He was not drafted for a pass rush plan. <laughs> he, he has some things that was baked into the evaluation that you knew he had to do. And this is what's really interesting for me, and the reason I wanted to do this show today is because this is the, the port from the day you're drafted to the day you play your first NFL game. There's a large volume of progress you can make right there. And then you go into, I think, what slows down a little bit, and you talk to this probably better than I can, is as the game, your first season starts to slow down a little bit, then you get to your second offseason and you get a chance to make a leap again, right? So for me, it's like two phases. Who's making this first adjustment really well? And it seems like Trayvon's making steady progress. I won't say that he's been, you know, like super freak getting off uh, on the first couple of six weeks of his, of his season, but I do feel like he's making progress and I think they're dropping him a little more than he expected. And I think he looks good doing it. Well, he is a guy that is a tremendous athlete. You look at some of his testing numbers, those things were off the charts. And those were some of the things that you knew were going to be enticing to any team that was picking in the top 10, let alone the top five or the number one overall pick. So long arm guy with huge upside. You know, I guess the question now is like, what does he have to do to reach that? And mm -hmm. you talked about the game slowing down. That part is going to be extremely huge for a guy like Trayvon Walker, who is kind of adjusting to new responsibilities as more of a pure edge guy now he also has the versatility and one thing about preseason teams don't necessarily show their hand in how they plan on using a guy playing and play out throughout the season maybe in preseason they show a little bit more just kind of pure outside edge rush type stuff but during the season he's going to be moving all around i wouldn't be surprised if one possession you see him lined up at the edge, like you talked about him dropping in the coverage because he has that athletic ability, as well as rushing him from maybe a three-tech uh, position, doing different stunts and utilizing his strength and his athleticism. So I think when you think about Trayvon Walker, 
and really kind of taking this game to the next level. This is a guy that's going to be utilized as someone that is extremely versatile, almost like a weapon on defense. Can you kind of see that happening? Yeah, absolutely. Especially because when you look at where he's starting right now and you just take his pass rush snaps, as an overall, he's really getting about 15% of a win rate, right? He's actually one of the guys that's connected consistently. He's got uh, some pressures. He's got a sack. He's actually made the, the completion of the move. He's got a hit. And he's got to hurry, right? So, like, you can see the nice combination there. But when you take a step back, that's, that's I think, the expectation. You get a 50% pressure rate, you feel like you're doing pretty well. I think when you take the true pass set rate, and that's something that PFF does well, I think, is, is differentiating. You can see that on Brandon Thorne's work as well, folks. Shout out to Brandon for everything that he does. But I think that goes up, and it gives you an idea that, yes, he's, he's at this point now, but you can see the progress already beginning. I think he's got a lot more. Once he gets, I think, hand usage in particular and understanding when and where, the feel of where to counter in that pass rush plan, I think that will make a big difference for Trevor Walker. Yeah, and working on his get off and things like that. And those are things where you can work on and you can get improve on. I know with me, one of the main things that I always ask myself when evaluating a prospect is, what can you teach? What can't you teach? All right, now, what you can't teach is at 6'5", 272 pounds, with almost 36 inch <laughs> arm length, running a 4.51 at the combine, a 6.89 three cone drill, which is absurd, and a 4.32 shuttle. So this is someone that has freakish athletic ability. Again, the you know lower body strength that he needs to improve on, you can do that. You can incorporate weights, become more explosive. His get off, that's all repetition there. And again not something that he was traditionally asked to do at Georgia. So I see a lot of upside with this guy. I understand why he went number one. Has to tap into being more of a pure pass rusher and bring that productivity. And if he continues on what he kind of started in preseason, I think he is a guy that definitely will be pretty versatile. All right, y'all, when we come back, we're going to get into picks two and pick three. We got Aiden Hutchinson to the Detroit Lions and Derek Stingley Jr., to the Houston Texans. We're going to talk about those guys next. But first, we're going to talk to you about our good friends over at Prize Picks. All right. And Locked On NFL Draft, they got something for you here. And Prize Picks, terrific. It's a daily fantasy where you can, you know, you can wager on a lot of player props over unders. And it's not just fantasy. All right. Uh, a lot of entries that you can make consistently throughout the day if you are a fan of not just football and i know we talk about football in here but football baseball basketball they have every sport that you need i love it because it's extremely easy to use i i mean i go on there they have the over over under they got all the odds on there and you can pick whatever it is that you want to play and you can pick up two to five players and if they will go score more or less than their prize pick projections you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry, all right? There's no competing against people, so it's just you versus the projections that are available. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport. Again, I already talked about NFL, NBA, NHL, PGA, college football, college basketball, men and women. I mean, they got soccer, WNBA, NASCAR. They have tennis, everything, all right? And they got safe and fast withdrawals as well, currently operational in about 30 states. And they also got Canada. Our friends above the border, north of the border of the United States. All right, download Price Picks right now. Go to PricePicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit matching up to $100 with the promo code locked on. So if you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. So you have $200 to play with. Same as if you deposit $50, Price Picks, they will give you $50. So then you'll have $100 to kind of play with. All right. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100. All right, guys, we want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day. And also let you know that make sure you check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview starting August 31st, an eight-episode extravaganza to get, your ready, to get you ready for the NFL season. The local team experts in the Locked On Podcast Network and Odyssey NFL Insiders all combining into one Ultimate NFL Preview. Starting August 31st, search the Ultimate Pro Football Preview 2022 on your Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. So let's get into Aiden Hutchinson. And I think this was a guy where 
most people were kind of projecting, oh, he's going to be the number one overall pick. Uh, he's the safest guy. Maybe people mm -hmm. didn't believe that he had the highest of ceiling. But one thing was clear, obviously extremely productive. And I think if you were Detroit, you're really happy to get this guy. You know exactly what you're getting. High yeah. motor guy, high effort guy, looks the part, plays strong, plays bully ball. He can bully guards. I mean, you watch some of these games where he just wreak havoc. Uh, Ohio State game. That definitely comes to mind. The hand usage is good. His bend is solid. There are some people who are going to say he's a little stiff, and he didn't look the strongest at the attack point against Georgia in the bowl game. But overall, I mean, this is a guy who might not have the highest ceiling, but his floor is extremely high. And so far throughout the preseason, he has been very productive. Uh, shoot, first quarter, first drive of his NFL career in the preseason tackle for loss. And you should see him disregard an offensive lineman, swim move, get back there, make the tackle. He's still out there with the one stripe, uh, uh, with the one striper uh, <laughs> down his eye. So he's staying true to character. But a guy who, again, maybe not the highest ceiling. And I don't even like saying that because when I say it, it's just from a, an athletic trait standpoint, he's mm -hmm. not the most explosive guy. But from an ability standpoint, I believe he's going to be very productive and Watching hard knocks, Knox is very clear that the coaches, they love him. Aaron Glenn walked up to him and said, man, look, I don't say this to everybody, but when we're drafting you and seeing you in person, you are everything and more that we thought you were getting, that they thought they were getting. And that's like the ultimate compliment you can give to a player. But so far, what have you seen from Aiden Hutchinson? And what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, I, I like everything that he's done. I think he's overcome that thing like the – He's too lean and he's too short armed, like the two things, right? And like you said, he's overcome that already. And we know that it, this is this is the preseason goes up another level in the regular season. If God forbid they make the playoffs, it goes up another level. We'll see what happens with the Detroit Lions. But I think that's exactly it, and folks. I think Eric and I both watch Hard Knocks. And I think we both appreciate it. I mean, Eric's a former star of the show, so you, you got to give him that. Let's get a snack, but. Not everybody enjoys that. But you can get these little things. And when a, a defensive coordinator just basically comes out and tells you, you've delivered. We're three weeks into the season. You've delivered on what we thought you were going to be. That says it all. And I take a look at the statistics. It's not, it's not super hot. Like, he's got one pressure. That's the way that it goes. But this is the key thing for me. Just like you said, in that swim move for that TFL, that's just the first example. He wins 40% of his reps to this point in the NFL, and the kid's been here half a minute. I think that shows you that despite the arm length, despite the fact that he doesn't carry a lot of weight, I, I think there's some concern about anchor, like you mentioned against Georgia. That was an example as well. I think he's shown you everything that you need to know that he is going to be able to continue to progress because I think his ceiling's a little bit higher than most, given the fact that he's got a couple of physical issues to come overcome to really reach that maximum. But he seems that everything is strung up the right way to hit that cord and have it all sing in one direction. I think he's going to get there, and I think he's off to a really hot start. When you can win half of your pass rush snaps in this league, I don't care if it's the preseason. You're you're on fire. Yeah, and for a guy who is as big as he is, he has decent size on him. It's really odd for me to see uh, these defensive linemen with their pads <laughs> and they got the jersey rolled up and like, right? Looking like a as big as he is, he has six pack. And I'm like, man, how the heck does this dude have a six pack? I'm struggling to even have any sort of a. Uh, a uh, strong looking stomach maybe that's just my old age kicking in uh, another guy that went in the top five we got to talk about Derek Stingley Jr a cornerback that got drafted to the Houston Texans out of LSU obviously this was a I don't want to say controversial pick because people believe in the talent that they saw especially his uh, freshman year at mm -hmm. LSU and I, you know, I believe LSU is DBU all right yeah. uh, they've had a lot of guys go to the NFL play extremely well and you think that he's in line. Now, his sophomore year and junior year weren't as ideal. Had to deal with some injuries and different things kind of holding him back there. It was a messy situation at LSU. Down sophomore year for the team entirely. Down junior year. But I think in the right situation, this is a guy who definitely can excel. And he talked about kind of showing up. He's coming up off an injury. There was some rust that was kicking in. Wasn't doing great in one-on-ones, but he definitely had a feel for what they were asking him to do in team. They ran a lot of cover two. I would have expected them to potentially get a longer corner, like a guy named Saz Gardner, and that was who I kind of projected to the Houston Texans uh, while we were talking a lot about the draft. But so far, so good with Derek Stingley, and it seems like with each practice that passes by each preseason game and now heading into the season his confidence with what he's seeing and what is being asked of him has grown a lot 
Yeah, I'm with you. He reminds me of that old uh, that NASCAR racing movie. I can't remember the name of it. But they had to keep taking a layer of stuff off of it because it was an old car, right? They're going to rebuild it. The rust just keeps coming off a little bit by a little bit by a little bit, and he's getting quicker. He's getting more, I think, a better feel for what the competition level is. And like you said, he didn't play a whole lot of snaps the last couple of years. It makes it tough to do that. But he's got a PBU. I mean, the top DBs in this rookie class this preseason are only at two and three PBUs he's already got one so like I feel like he's got his legs underneath him and he's got a progression that we're going to see here in the first half of the season that will get him back to where we expected him to be I think he's perfectly fine I mean he's been targeted twice and he gave up a pick unlike somebody else at the CB position we're going to talk about here in a minute all right so coming up got another cornerback coming off the board in the top five exciting times if you are a defensive back in the NFL <laughs> But first, got to talk to you about this message from the NHTSA. And we are advising people, do not drive drunk. And it is never okay to drive stone, all right? If you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI. It's never okay to drive stone, all right? It is never okay to drive stone. You put yourself and others in danger. And if you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Drive high, get a DUI, all right? Do you think it's okay to drive stone? I hope not. The truth is your reaction time slows way down when you are high. You are not only putting yourself in danger, but everyone around you. Stop kidding yourself. If you've been using marijuana in any form, do not get behind the wheel. Again, if you feel different, you'll drive different. Drive high, get a DUI, all right? Are you one of those people who thinks that it's okay to drive stone? What's worse that can happen? You end up driving below the speed limit. It's no big deal, right? Wrong. The truth is your reaction time slows down, all right? Talk about a buzzkill. Stop kidding yourself, guys. It is not okay to drive high, so don't do it. All right, let's talk about the fourth and fifth overall picks. All right, coming up, we got uh, a guy by the name of, you know what? I'm not even going to call him Sauce because the Jets said that he had to earn that nickname. So we're going to call him Ahmad Garner. Right now, we're going to remove I'm the sauce. Him you know, sauce. Like the I don't care what the chain, Jets say. <laughs> all right? But Amal Gardner, Sauce Gardner, taking number four overall by the New York Jets. And this was one that was a little interesting, but I think he fits traditionally what we've seen Robert Sala run, right? This is a guy with San Francisco 49ers, played that kind of Seattle three scheme where you have these long corners. They line up a lot in press alignment, but they have like the vertically to outside pushing routes uh, responsibility. They can kind of pass off stuff that are underneath drag routes and whatnot. I'd say towards the end of the time with uh, Robert Sala with the 49ers, he ended up playing a little bit more too high type defenses, a lot of more quarters. If that continues, I don't know if that's necessarily a big time strength of Sauce Gardner. I want him at the line of scrimmage. I want him putting hands on guys. I really like him in a press bail type situation, but this is a guy who has been trending. It's hard to say trending up when you're the number four, four overall pick, right. but he's been doing exceptionally well there for the New York Jets. Has done a really good job acclimating to the scheme and what is being asked of him in the NFL uh, in the preseason games. I know over the first two games, I mean, he just was not targeted. He had a ton of coverage snaps, and they're not throwing at him. So I don't know if they're scared of the 6'3", 200-pound guy, but so far, it's been kind of boring over there on Sauce Island. That's the thing. Like, the sauce is not hot right now. It's like that mild habanero that doesn't actually taste like habanero, right? Because nobody <laughs> wants to go at him. 35 snaps, zero targets. If anybody's made the transition, like Hutch has made the transition pretty well, right? Like Sauce is nearly where he was a season ago at a completely different level of football. So I think that says all you really need to know. Where can he go from here? Someone's going to push him. Someone's going to do that. And I don't, I don't think it's scheme dependent. Like you said, he could play press bail. I think he could play off and be just fine because I, I think they're going to try to experiment different ways to get at him because right now, at least in the preseason, Atlanta – the Giants and the Eagles were scared of him. And if you're a rookie in this league and they don't want to target you, hey, take that money and roll. Take that time to adjust to what you might be asked to do that, that isn't in your wheelhouse, right? Like, I think that's going to allow him to, like, already, he's already at his floor. It's going to take his ceiling that much higher. I'm excited about it. And there's not a whole lot to be excited about for the Jets right now. I think he's the, the thing that it's revolving around for me. Yeah, the next guy that we're going to talk about is an edge rusher that ended up going to the New York Giants. They had two picks inside the top 10, and one was the offensive lineman, one was an edge rusher. The edge rusher happened to be Kayvon Thibodeau out of 
Oregon, the guy that had a lot of question marks coming out, right? And, and again, not a controversial pick, but a pick where people were like, uh, is it going to fall, you know, to pick eight, nine, ten? Because of some off-field comments, the Giants said, no way. He's too good. He's too athletic. He's too explosive. And he's shown a lot of this early on with his time with the New York Giants. You know, there's a play that sticks out watching him against the Cleveland Browns, firing off the edge, going around, running that hoop. And we see that drill where – Edge rushers put their shoulder, they kind of dip their shoulder on the offensive lineman, and then they have to kind of like run around and then even dip to climb back uh, um, under and kind of try to chase the quarterback back down from behind. You see him do those things, and he has this freakish athletic ability. I say all that to say, unfortunately, he kind of is down with a little knee injury. It was like a knee sprain. A lot of people thought it was potentially uh, 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 a torn ACL. Great right. news. It was not that. Uh, he got taken out on this – Crack, I don't, not a crackback block, but you had a guy pulling There's across, a cut. yeah, yeah, across the formation, cuts him down, and a lot of people were like, "Oh, it's dirty." It's like, dude, this, we've been seeing that on the offense for how long? <laughs> you, you just get they, they, they're, they're, you literally work cut drills, right? So I don't think it could be dirty. Again, it doesn't look right. There's something about it, but they do cut drills to where you got to get low and you got to put your hands down, you got to put your shoulder down, you got to really work to kind of take that on and understand that if you see a detached Y guy on the opposite side, there's potential for him to come and cut you down. So hard way to kind of learn a mistake, right? But hopefully right. he gets better for that. What are some of your thoughts on just the projection and kind of where he's headed? I, I think it's really too bad that the injury happened. It's a sprained MCL is what it is. So yeah. it'll take a little bit, but I, I think the joint should be fine. He should get back perfectly fine. I agree with you. That A, that's not a dirty play. B, you're supposed to be prepared for that when you play edge rusher, right? They do that stuff at high school. They do that in peewee so that you know how to protect your knees. I think you get away from it a little bit in college, and, and you, you start to think, oh, it's just all, all about my get-off. I don't have to worry about that stuff. And now it's a little bit of dose of reality. So I, I actually think that's good for him because I think he's a guy that, because of that athletic ability, thought he could just walk in be who he is he's still got to continue to work and i think that will help his mentality going forward so that he he remembers some of the finer details i think that's going to work he's got a pretty good uh rush percentage right now he's winning about 17 percent of his snaps at least in the preseason that's solid obviously it's not 40 percent like hutchinson but it's coming there and i think probably was cut short by the fact that he didn't get as many reps because of the injury high upside high ability can't wait to watch all these guys in the top five we had to revisit it because you know it feels like you know, we've been talking about some of the other prospects who have kind of shown some upside. And it's like, well, what about the top guys? So finally, we, we got to them. We got to the top guys. We're going to continue to talk about all those guys on this show right here. We want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day. Now, go make Locked On Fantasy Football your second listen. Find the intellectual fantasy expert, Vinny, who brings over 20 years of NFL expertise and a unique angle to give you the moves no one else has. Get ready for your fantasy drafts with Locked On Fantasy Football. But that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On NFL Draft. We'll see y'all tomorrow when we have John Harris join us.